Yes, guys, welcome from me to Championship Manager 0102, the Game On Challenge, part 77. Well, we cleared about, about four hours yesterday, myself and Matt, um, and it was another, it was another, um, yeah, yeah, that sounds about right, quarter past ten, so make sure it's the right one. It was another outstanding day of CM, to be honest with you. We didn't play as much as we've been playing, but in all fairness, fucking hell, you get two hours in a game, you've got to be happy. Um, as we reach yet another new uh, milestone, a new landmark, it, you know, we, we. I think the important thing is, is, and I've said this before, you know, it, it's just about communication when you're playing a network game to get so far in. You're going to run into shit. Uh, you know, with a long-term save, you're going to run into to bugs, you're going to run into flaws, uh, that sort of shit, you're going to run into bullshit, you know, AI, for example, uh, will be playing bullshit formations, five at the back with a defense, ultra-defensive, you will run into a lot of stuff, and we have, you know, we, we've run into a lot of shit uh, over the seasons, um, and I think maybe when we move clubs, it's what spurs us on, it is what spurs us on, now, I can't 100% remember where the last update was. Uh, so, if I cover old ground, apologies. But, um, but Matt finds himself having left Paris Saint-Germain uh, after winning the title. He left for Benfica. Matt is at Benfica. We've got to the end of the season with his first full season at Benfica. And here we see... They, oh, we've got, sorry, we've got, we've just done the updates, apologies, we did the updates, um, so he won, he, he won the title with Benfica, quite convincingly, to be honest with you, um, you know, I, he starts with a, in fact, I don't want to, he, he has a lot of money, I mean, I say a lot of money, I believe it's in excess of a billion pounds, and, uh, the problem he's got, and this is a problem he had at France, in France with Paris Saint-Germain, he did say he has players Wanting to move to bigger clubs. Uh, I'm trying to see who, who he was talking about. They're not bigger clubs. Um, they're just first team regulars. There it is. So, Hassan Sona, the Turkish striker. We speak about, he wants to move to a bigger club. Now, you could argue, how the fuck does he want to go to a bigger club? He's at the title. I think it's down to the, uh, the reputation of Portugal. And it was a similar sort of thing over in Italy. Italy, uh, sorry, uh, France with Paris Saint-Germain. So um, yeah, so he he bowed out of the um, the Champions League and he bowed out of the cup quite early on. Champions League, of course, Benfica won it last season before Matt took over. And I think what appealed to him is he knew there'd be money. I knew there'd be money. They were Champions League winners, so he should he, he should be inheriting a fairly good squad. It was pretty decent by the defence. Uh, he's going to have resources. He's got a stadium and a half, 90-odd thousand. Um, you know, he's going to be taking on a, not an easy challenge, but a straightforward one where he could maybe build a legacy. But also, and most important, is that he hadn't been Benfica before. Um, so that's the end of his first season as we come to the end of season 88 and as we kick in the start of season 89. He is looking at jobs. I should point out, he is looking at jobs. Um... Let's take a look at the jobs. There ain't actually anything of interest about. There's not much of interest about whatsoever. We just did the updates. Now, over to me. You may recall who I am. I'm still them. I am Roma. And we come to the end of two and a half years in charge of Roma. And we have made it a hat trick. Now, you could argue, am I getting bored? Not really. Um, you know, we continue to build our squad over at Roma. Uh, last season, we won the Italian Cup, uh, which eluded us the season before. Um, now, last season, actually, we lost in the final of the Italian Cup. We won, lost the first leg 3-1 and won the second leg 2-1. So we actually didn't, go, d d didn't make it. However, it was something uh, a little bit different this time around because um, we overturned a 2-1 defeat against Napoli in the first leg to, and won the second leg 3-1. So, was really, really pleased with that. We sewed up the title fairly early on. But, um, it would be fair to say, the biggest game of last season has to be um, the Champions League final. And there you see it. I thought I'd save that till last. 
it was me against Matt in the final. Uh, to be fair to Matt, he did very well to get to the final. Uh, and I think he had no pressure going into that game. For me, uh, last season, we got knocked out in the quarterfinals. Season 4, we lost that in the final. Uh, but we went all the way and we have won the Champions League. We did the triple. Now, this season ahead, assuming Matt doesn't leave, assuming Matt doesn't leave, is going to be very, very interesting because, get this, Matt is in the, um, the World Club Cup. Now, he's in that. It's every two years. He's in that because Benfica won the Champions League, not last season, the season before, before Matt took over. Now, for some bizarre reason, I'm in it. And I'm thinking, why am I in it? Because Fiorentina won the UEFA Cup, who are there. And then I realise why I'm in it, and you can probably work out, it's because Rome are the hosts. So it's good, actually, that my, Matt and myself are both in it. Um, so that'll be interesting. Um, let's take a look at uh, Matt's signings. For last season, uh, when he took over, uh, he had to wait until December before he got two of them. A couple of really good... Uh, that guy, we think, is Raul. I'm not sure how he ended up at fucking Chesterfield. Um, we're, Washington Rocher, absolute great player. Uh, phenomenal stats, uh, attributes as well. But 20 goals, ridiculous. At Lemos, absolute monster of a player. Um... Now, let me just think. Sewn up. And, of course, these two were already done before he took over. That is, of course, Shevchenko Regen. How did he do last season? Uh, it's okay. Uh, he hasn't got any deals in the pipeline because... Oh, turn a light. Yeah, for it, they're going. He can't make any deals in the pipeline because the window in Portugal opens in January. Unless they're unprotected. But he's not got any deals in the pipeline there at all. Who knows? Um what Matt is going to do. It, you know, it remains to be seen. Let's go to myself then. Um, last season's transfers. Uh, Jonathan Pope. That is... I think that's... Uh, no, I don't... That's not Stephen Gerrard Regen. I've got the Gerrard Regen. I'm not... Matt actually found me him. Matt found me him. Matt, Matt, Matt offered him. Now, I'm going to tell you something about scouting, right? So, when I did a stream recently on YouTube... Um, a good friend, Mark Whitaker was tuned in and he said, I'm happy to be a scout for you. So we had this little agreement. We had this little deal. Uh, as you guys know, I'm connected with Mark Whitaker and Gary Johnson. So I sent the save to Mark Whitaker. I also sent the save to Gary Johnson. And those guys put their heads together. No, they didn't. They did it separately. And anything that Mark found of interest, he sent to me. He sent, to me, he sent me this fuck off spreadsheet. And Gary did the same with Matt. Um, and... It was difficult. I mean, these guys, fucking out. If you want something um, to do with scouts, these guys are your people. More of that in a moment. Um, so they went through and come up with loads and loads of suggestions. Gary did as well. Uh, and obviously we have our restrictions of seven signings uh, per window. So they weren't saying, sign him, sign him. They were saying, you know, he's an option, he's an option. Mark sent me this spreadsheet, which was just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, so this guy here, Samir Al Jabba, that was one of them, uh, Gary. And I was a bit unsure. Uh, Gary is a huge fan of, uh, well, both, both the guys are, of trying to develop them. And to be fair, right, I gave him a game and 29 games, 7 4 eight, very, very happy. His value is going up higher and higher. Now, this is next one is very interesting. George Francisco. Now, I was already tracking him on the stream of, of YouTube. And a little bit uh, contradicting here, because Mark said, he goes, oh, I don't think he's that good. He'll get found out in positioning. I went, yeah, it's a good point, really, because positioning's only 14 for a defender. Then when Mark sent me the spreadsheet, he was on it. <laughs> so uh, I ended up going for him anyway. Um, he, he, he did well. Defence is quite difficult in the ODB. Uh, Mario Monteiro, I got him from my uh, pr previous club, Cruzeiro. Uh, Aguero, now that is Kili Gonzalez, left winger, superb. Mikado, uh, he's just not done it, and I'll explain why he's not done it in a minute. And that was a play, I regret getting this fucking Greek winger because he's done shit for me. Uh, in terms of strikers, they've just not done it, and I've been playing uh, Danny Hesp up top, and you can sell, sell, see how well he's done for me. Uh, we have got some players arriving in the Jan when the July window opens, and let me show you these guys. 
We've got Barry Fowler. We were going to get him last season. We opted not to. We opted to pull out of it. He signed a new one-year deal. We're getting him this season. Uh, I don't know. I mean, he is only 19. I, you know, I don't really need the striker. I, I, you know. Alain Hoot. Now, I think... I said to uh, Matt, I said, I think this is one of the players that Mark had pointed out. Or maybe even Gary. I think... I don't desperately need a left winger, but he looks fucking phenomenal. He really does. Ticks a lot of the boxes. Uh, Michael Juggins. Now, he was on the list that Mark sent me. And I forget the guy's name on the ODB, who he's clearly a regen of. But um, he, I like him. I like him particularly. I like him because I've got my middle defender with an arrow going right up into midfield. So that's why I like him. Uh, Mikel Martinez. Um, a lot of money for him. Now, the reason I like the look of him is because last season he registered 17 assists for Mallorca. Um, so, hopefully, you know, we'll see. And that's four of my seven transfers. I may pull out of... Um, I may pull out of the... I'm not pulling out of him. The striker, Barry Fowler. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, we have got a bid in for this guy. Uh, £37.5 million. Pounds. Because uh, we've got money. We've made quite a bit of money, actually, with uh, prize money. And I noticed that the attendances kept being a packed house. But I didn't think about asking for a fucking increase. Um, so let's, uh, in case you missed it, let's go back to last season's um, signings. You may have missed it. Uh, Junior was an ex Cruzeiro player. He's been nothing more than a squad player. He did well for me uh, at Cruzeiro. But that's it. Um... I don't know, he's been injured a bit last season, uh, Dimitrov, but uh, still looks pretty decent. Danny Hess, of course, we brought, we've just spoke about him. Mark Higgins, Harry Kuehl, Regen, fucking phenomenal. Uh, Zafarov, uh, Stoichkov, Regen. Ian Collins, uh, he he should break in. We'll oh, his reflex has gone to 20 now. Uh, and Ibrahim Saad, superb. So the goalkeepers... Um, Oliver Kahn regen was, was superb last season for me. 7-3-9, 51 games. But the Neville Southall regen, he came in for a few games here and there and did really, really well. And I've given him yet another contract. You can see I gave him a contract during our last session um, just to keep them happy. I think I managed to give him a new contract as well. Yeah, I gave him one as well. Um, because I don't think May is going to go much more than one more season, in all fairness. He's still got a hell of an auto value. Um... So, you know, that, that is that. That, that is the, the, the start of the new season. I mean, the next milestone, I say every season's a milestone, a new chapter. New chapter is when we take over clubs. Uh, I haven't really got a desire to leave Roma anytime soon. Um, I had a conversation with Matt yesterday. What job would appeal to me next? <sighs> I don't know. It's very, very difficult. It can be very, very difficult. Um, I would uh, quite like to see... This is what I said to Matt, right? Talking about his Benfica and Portugal being quite low on the coefficients. Correct me if I'm wrong here. I truly believe that the coefficients is a true reflection on the reputation of a country, which I'm pretty sure that's the case. So there's no danger of a player at Roma getting wanting to move to a bigger club whilst Italy are top of that. Same with England, same with Spain. But France are fourth. Now... You can see that Portugal are down in eighth. Now, when I was Benfica for six years, my objective was to try and build them in the champion, uh, in, on the coefficients. And we did. We got them up to sixth. But I can't do it on my own. I think it's very difficult. Um, it, you know, there ain't much um, competition. Even if Matt had joined me, which I would have liked, but even that, it might be different if Matt joined. You know, we were both, we've both done it in Germany together. <laughs> Sounds really gay, doesn't it? We've both done it in Italy together. We've both done it in England together. Uh, we haven't done Holland. Uh, the only problem about Holland is that you're limited with teams. Um, I'd quite like us, personally, to go to somewhere like... That's an open playable league. Somewhere like... Um, let me think. Russia. So if we went to Russia... And both worked on it and tried to build them. It, it, do, do you know what I mean? It, it would be interesting. It would be very, very interesting to see what, you know, we, who knows what the future holds. Um, 
But uh, a big thanks to uh, Gary and Mark here now for the scouting thing. Now, what I was going to say to you, right? So, uh, the guys have come up with a really good idea. And I think this is absolutely brilliant. In light of them doing what they did for me and Matt, um, between the three of us, we've got so much expertise in so many angles of the game, whether it be the network side of things, whether it be the, the data, uh, the scouting side of things, uh, and this and that. And uh, Mark came up with an idea, and he called it CM Surgery. I am going to do a video on it, CM Surgery. And it's basically to do with, uh, if you want your game analysed for scouts, um, Mark and uh, Gary are happy to do. Just zip it up and send it to them. Alternatively, if you want your game analysed, as in uh, what I do on videos, you know, I am a bit of a fucking wanker, uh, and I will be quite um, critical on something that I don't agree with. I won't be a complete bastard. I just, I'm just very, very honest. I, 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 I was clear with Gary about Gary's save. When Gary sent me his save, um, something that I don't like... We all play the game different. When Mark sent me that list of players, right, and he couldn't have worded this any better, he, he explained to me what he looks for uh, and what he... But he goes, but the bottom line is, right, the next person can do it completely different and still smash the league. Uh, everyone is different in what they look for. Um, there was a thing we saw, weren't it, when um, O'Connor on the forum, on, on the Facebook group, had... Uh, sold Amoruso and brought in Segalco. Now, the thing is, right, if you talk ODB, Segalco is a great player and he'll score goals. But that, that, that is equivalent to starting as Man United and thinking, oh, fuck this, I'm going to get I'm gonna get rid of Van Nistelrooy and bring in Segalco. There's no fucking, there's no sense, there's no logic. It don't matter, you know, Van Nistelrooy is, he, he, he's better. He's better than Segalco. That, I don't care what anyone says. Segalco is a goal machine. And for a mediocre team, it'll do a good job. There's no doubt. Samba will turn into a good goal machine, quite potentially. Um, but Mark is, 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 is Mark and Gary, you know, they identify things that you wouldn't think. Um, I'm not a big fan of CM Scout. I've, I've openly said that before. But that's irrelevant. That is irrelevant. Because the bottom line is, right, uh, and I thought about this after um, I went through Gary's first save, is it don't, Gary can start a new game now. Uh, and he don't need to see him scout because he can memorise it. And we all have a memory. You know, it doesn't matter how you, how you word it. We load an ODB, right? I'm going to look to try and get Mark Kerr. I'm going to look to get Selakovic, Mike Duff, Terebo West, and so on and so on and so on. That is no different than Gary having done a bit of research on the CM scout and memorising. It's as simple as that. So I'm sort of warming to accepting... CM Scout, not as a not as a scout within the game, uh, as a reference when you're not playing. I get uh, fair enough, and then memory, or even I say memory, or even writing a list because I've wrote a list of ODB players. Um, but you know, uh, you know, so I, I can warm to it. I really can. Uh, and that's it from me, guys. That is the game on challenge. Hope you enjoyed it. Until the next one, take it easy.